So what we can see with that data is that, um, okay, if you look at it, you can see that A is declining a bit, although it seems to have some regular peaks and troughs. That's the blue one. F is growing, actually. That's the uh, the uh, the orangey one. Uh, but it's much more consistent. It's very there's very little noise in that line. It's mostly you know the same every day, but a little bit more than the day before. And L is growing quite fast, but it's not very consistent. So there's a lot of noise. Uh, when you see lots of spread out values, that's we call that noise. So what we're going to do um, now is try and explore the. Oh, sorry, in in a couple of weeks we'll explore the peaks and troughs in a bit more detail. What we're going to do now is trying to reduce some of the noise and examine the trends. So where is it going? Where is it heading? We can see that quite clearly on those lines, but that's not always the case. So one way of getting rid of noise is just doing averages. So rather, so for example, rather than plotting every day, if we just plot the weekly average of sales, then uh, that will give us a, a much um, much clearer line because there's much less, there's much fewer values, many fewer values in the line. And uh, Pandas really enables you to do that. It uh, gives us an easy way of doing that because it allows you to sample the data at regular intervals. And this is such a common technique that uh, there are there are ways there are settings so that you can sample weekly or uh, lots of other options. So if, if you imagine, here's the code that does that. It uh, the sample rate is set to W which meaning weekly, uh, and we can resample the data and save it to another data frame uh, by taking the average uh, over every week. So if you imagine there are 365 uh, days a year, we divide that by seven days a week, that gives us 52.14 uh, weeks a year, and that gets rounded up. So there's going to be 53 uh, rows in our data frame. Uh, other things you could do, you could sample monthly, Using M, you could sample semi-monthly, so which would be twice a month, so 15th and the end of every month. You can sample quarterly, every quarter. And if you had uh, you know, um, data that was measured every second or something like that, every minute, you can sample every hour, minute, second, and multiples of those things, so every 30 seconds. So lots of options there to, to get a, um, a clearer picture by throwing away some of the data, essentially, and finding averages over that, uh, over that uh, sample. So once we've done that, uh, what can we do? We can then um, we can then overlay the line plot. So I can I could just draw the in my chart. I could just draw the average data um, uh, as a you know as a separate thing, and that would just be a simple picture. But actually, it's quite nice to overlay the, the plots because that will then show what you'll see is that we'll be able to see that not only. We can see what the average looks like, but we can also see whether the, the line, the time series, has noise. So what we do is we draw the original lines with all the, all the data, uh, and then we draw the uh, average data over the top. So we use two calls to the plt bot dot plot, one with the original data and one with the average data. If you just do that as I've described it, that won't quite work because you'll end up having different colors, uh, because the way you, Matplotlib works is it gives a new color to each line as it draws them. And an easy fix to that is to reset the Matplotlib colors between the two calls. So you draw the um, original data in, you know, that comes out in, what was it, blue, orange, and green. You reset the colors so it starts from the beginning and, and you draw the average data so it will come out in blue, orange, and green again. And that's what it looks like. Okay, so you'll see I've set the sample rate. Uh, here's the whole program to do this. I've set the sample rate to W, and I've created this average data by resampling the data, and then I've set the, select, set, set the selected. So this average data contains all 25, um, all 25 products. Okay, at the moment we're just going to only draw, um, we're only going to draw these three. So then we, if you look at the code, then we plot the uh, the data. So this plt plot draws the data. That's the that's the original data. Then we reset the uh, the uh, the cycle, so that the the color cycle, and then we draw. Uh, so reset set prop cycle resets all the properties for this chart, including the colors and the line styles. Okay, so if you set some line styles or something, then they would get reset as well. Then we draw um, the uh, the averaged data. 
So plt.plot again. So we use two of these plt.plots to draw the two different um, uh, data frames. And we use different line widths, as you can see, 0.5 and 2, to distinguish one from the other. And so you get this very nice, I think it's a very clear chart, that you get the, you get, you can still see that uh, the uh, orange line, the F uh, product, is much less noisy than, say, the L product, which is much noisier, but it's much clearer by looking at the, the stronger lines, the, the uh, average data, where the trends are. You can see the, the peaks and troughs in the A, product A, you can see this very straight um, trend of product F and uh, the, the steeper but not quite so straight trend of product L. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice plot and without too much effort to get to it. The other thing you can do is rolling averages, but I think that's a good point at which to stop and then we'll look at rolling averages and trend lines in the next video.